All up in your grill with the hot juicy beef. What's up today? No man, no woman. Touchy Timmy and air scares. Ooh. <laughs> Boom, let's hit it. What do we got today? Yikes, disturbing video shows towering knife-wielding woman gunned down after repeatedly stabbing cop. Viewer discretion is advised. Avert your eyes if you are terrified of reality because this stuff is going on in uh, the world today. Let's have a look. Terrifying. Yikes. I mean, and uh, yeah, so BLM is out there basically stating that, uh, you know, he wrongfully killed her. He absolutely should not have used lethal force. I mean, like, there is images. I wonder if they have it here. There's the woman lunging. But there's an image of the police officer here. You can see the injury he has across his face. You know, she sliced him. She was demonized. Does she deserve to die? Probably not. But in that case, 100%. UK female player crowned victorious at pool tournament after trans-identified males dominate women's semifinals. All right, let's unpack it. What do we got? A woman has won a British pool championship after a phenomenal comeback against a trans-identified male in the final who had played another trans-identified man in the semifinal. Over the weekend, the Ultimate Pool Group hosted a mini-series tournament in the UK. On the women's side, 64 entrants entered the competition, including two trans-identified males who made it into the semi-finals, both of them. Uh, okay, Harriet Haynes, formerly Chris, and Lucy Smith. By the time of the semi-finals, Haynes and Smith ended up playing off against each other, meaning that there was an all-male semi-final in a women's sport. Amazing. Today, there were two men in the women's semi-final, yeah. There you go. So Lynn Pinches, a professional pool player who refused to compete against Haynes in the Women's Champion of Champions final to a round of applause from spectators in November 2023, declared that it was an absolute embarrassment for pool to have two trans-identified males playing against each other. Round the world sailor and women's sport advocate Tracy Edwards also slammed Ultimate Pool, decrying them as spineless wimps for allowing such a situation to happen in the first place. According to the rules of both the English Pool Association and World Eight Ball, Eight Ball Pool Federation, the governing bodies of the Ultimate Pool Group, trans-identified athletes are allowed to compete in the sport with absolutely no restrictions. According to the website, the current transgender bylaws for the EPA have been under review since December 2023. Yeah, so I guess the argument there is that uh, it's not such a physically demanding sport such as ice hockey or uh, American football, professional football, soccer, whatever you want to call it. These are physically demanding and a male's anatomy allows them to be much greater at the sport, meaning impressive. All right, meet Kellyanne Skinner, a man pretending to be a woman, who was awarded a Guinness World Record for being the fastest female marathon roller skater. Now men are taking women's world records away. When will it end? Mm. Well, it's all about the wimps. You know what I mean? If you're willing to stand up for something, if you actually have a foundation, two strong legs to stand on, then you'll die standing for what you believe in. You won't get down on your knees and crawl and beg just to exist like most of the men today. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Mm-mm. No. No. Yeah. Wimps. That's the definition of a wimp. Someone who's afraid.
of everything. Award-winning trans-identified male author from Taiwan sues critics who say he's not a lesbian. Hang on. Again. Let's take a moment to unpack this one. An award-winning transgender Taiwanese author has filed multiple lawsuits against lesbians and women's rights advocates after they refused to validate his identity as a woman and a lesbian. Lee Katomi has repeatedly targeted individuals who refer to him as a man with legal harassment and has been demanding substantial financial compensation from the defendants. Prior to relocating to Japan, Lee has used several aliases, including Lee Kifeng and Zhu Feng. Lee's birth name is Huang Chen Yang, a male name which means mourning and raising. In Taiwan, Lee's current name is Huang Chi Wei, a female name which means string instrument and a scented herb. I mean, interesting these Asian names, beautiful. A well-known author within the Japanese and Taiwanese literary scene, Lee presents himself as a female author and a lesbian despite having been born a male. Additionally, he frequently incorporates them sorry, themes of relationships both platonic and romantic between women within his work. He received a prestigious literary award known as the Akutagawa Prize for his novel Island Where the Red Spider Lilies Bloom. Prize for Rising Talent established in 1935 is highly sought after and carries with it a cash reward of 1 million yen, 6,400 USD, whatever. So this individual is super upset that no one takes him seriously. I've won an award for literature. Look at me. I am what I am. Well, anyway, whatever. Sex bomb. The collateral damage of OnlyFans. Explosive success. Yeah. I mean, I thought this came out, I think, I remember hearing about, like, this website where, like, you could go on and you get a celebrity to, like, leave you a voicemail. I'm pretty sure that's where OnlyFans started. You you go on and you're like, hey, can I get a uh, Bruce Buffer, Michael Buffer, to be like, it's time for your birthday, or it's time to leave a message, whatever. And I think that's what it all was. It was like to get close to uh, an actor or uh, a sports figure that you know is fledgling successfully. Anyway, it's become porn and for just regular people. The Porn Heavy website says it's prospered by building a nicer, kinder community for creators and consumers, yet OnlyFans also has upended people's lives. Reuters delves into US police files to reveal stories of financial ruin, family trauma, and extreme behavior. Yeah, you're dealing with sex, you're dealing with demons, okay? This story contains offensive language descriptions of sexual explosive conduct. Melinda Lamb's husband had a secret. This is all too common. Lamb <laughs> had uh, said she discovered it after a credit card payment for her son's karate lessons was declined. Ooh. December 2021. That led to the 46-year-old pharmacist. Okay, good job. Why is my card declined? From Colorado to check the accounts she shared with her husband. At least six credit cards were maxed out, she said, and nearly 40000 had been drained from their savings. We must have been, um, you know, identity th stolen. One card statement suggested where the money might have gone. It says OnlyFans, OnlyFans, OnlyFans. Recalled Lamb, who was then undergoing chemotherapy for breast cancer. Yo, her husband would ultimately spend 135000 on porn creators on OnlyFans' description-based website, according to Lamb, and records she shared with Reuters. She said she was preparing to file for bankruptcy and finalizing divorce. Yeah, no doubt. And also, like, going through treatment. OnlyFans supporters portray the platform as safe and empowering outlet for lucrative, socially acceptable sex work. Yeah, the feminist movement. I'm a boss, bitch. I'm going to sell that ass. I'm going to make that money. Look at me, I got all this money. And then what happens when the ass gets flat and everything's blown out and no one's looking for a 40-year-old, even a 30-year-old, selling it? You know what I mean? Like, when you're 50, it's not going to be OnlyFans. It's going to be only you and your cat. Anyway, whatever. It's ruining lives. It's ruining people who are on it. Marina Abramovich. Art exhibition with nude models gets mixed reviews. Oh, yeah. I would imagine. She's the lady who's involved in spirit cooking, involved with all the politicians doing weird rituals. She's a Satanist, and she's come up with the idea to place two models uh, next to each other, and you are to walk in between them, and they probably film it and uh, masturbate to it or something like this. These Satanist freaks. Uh, there's a separate entrance for those who are uncomfortable squeezing through the nude performers. The exhibition has otherwise re received mixed reviews from critics. The Guardian called it vital, but the Times said it was remorseless. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 
okay? And this is beautiful art. Whatever, anyway, look her up, check it out, she's crazy. Just in, Elon Musk introduces the cyber cab. Yeah, we covered this on Friday show. Apologies to everyone about Monday. Had to take my mother to an acupuncturist. Musk says anyone will be able to buy the cyber cab and owners could manage a fleet of robotic taxis. This is the beautiful thing about Elon. He'll produce the robo taxi and he said, hey, listen, you got enough money? You got 120 grand? Boom, you can have four of these, probably three with tax. And uh, you know, you can just post them up like a vending machine. People will use their little app and get it, boom. Optimistic. Yeah. Well, guess what? Investors weren't optimistic because they feel like Elon is just blowing smoke and he's always just saying this, saying that, whatever. Well, he did get his rocket ship to come back. You know, his booster rocket ship. Everyone said it was impossible 10 years ago. Well, guess what? He did it. He's doing it. He's a human doing. He's the only human that's doing. One thing he said was, uh, yeah, if you work 40 hours a week, fair enough. He said, if I work 100 hours a week, then I can do what you do in one year it will only take me four months. And that's why he's a human doing, because he's super ultra intelligent. Elon Musk introduced an army of Optimus robots, says people will be able to buy them to complete tasks. Epic. Musk then said attendees could walk up to the Optimus robots who would do things like serve drinks. At a scale, you should be able to buy Optimus robot for about 20 to 30 grand. Yeah, when it production's at scale. It can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend. All right, let's have a quick look at this. In a robot suit, uh, sort of that. And then we've progressed tr dramatically year after year. So if you extrapolate this, you're really going to have something spectacular, something that anyone could own. Uh, so you can have your own personal R2-D2 C-3PO. Um, but fundamentally, at scale, the Octopus robot, you should be able to, to buy an Octopus robot for, I think, probably twenty to thirty thousand dollars long term. So, and, and and what can it do? It can, it'll be able to do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, or babysit your kids. It can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks. Um, yeah, everyone loves that. Uh, so here's the question: Is like, uh, what's the parameter? Are you going to be allowed to let this thing leave your house and go get your groceries? Like, I mean, the truth is, is that the government is well too far behind on this. And what's going to happen? We don't know. 7-Eleven is closing more than 400 locations. Oh, come on. What do you mean? Well, several hundred underperforming 7-Eleven uh, locations across North America are closing. The bikini store announced. Uh, there are more than 13,000. So, uh, you know, not a big dent, let's say. But what else is going on? Boeing to slash 17,000 jobs, delayed delivery as strike continues. Yeah, strikes happening. Well, they're going to cut the workforce. They're like, you know, we're, we're screwing up everything. We focused way too much on DEI. But uh, so what workforce are they cutting? Executives? Are they cutting uh, lower level jobs? Financial reality after a strike by 30,000 West Coast workers shuttered production of its 737 MAX. And they're shelving that. They're going to shelve that. Boeing shares fell 2.3% in aftermarket trading. Yeah, absolutely. Boeing, uh, their Starliner made it to Earth. So, I mean, God bless. No humans on it, though. So, I wonder what would happen if they had the humans. Walgreens announced a plan to close 1,200 stores over the next three years. And why am I talking about this? Why does anyone care that these stores are calling? Because the government keeps telling you that um, everything's great. The economy's good. You have savings. You know, you're doing fine. Vote for me. Well, Kamala, Kamala received poor marks for leadership as a lawyer in San Francisco, documents reveal. All right. Job performance reviews when she worked as a civil lawyer for the city of San Francisco. They got the documents uh, from the city. Now the vice president took a job with the city of San Francisco after she resigned from San Francisco District Attorney's Office after she led a poorly organized coup to overthrow Chief Deputy District Attorney Daryl Solomon. Well, uh, I mean, the practice helped because she totally overthrew and usurped Joe Biden. I've become disillusioned and disappointed with the top leadership of the district attorney's office, Harris said publicly as she resigned, complaining about the dysfunctional leadership and low-level morale in the office. <laughs> but Harris' leadership skills in her new job were not that impressive either. She left the district attorney's office to work for city attorney Louise Rennie as a deputy attorney to run the child services unit in the city in 2000. But as she plotted to challenge her old boss, District Attorney Terrence Hallahan, 
for his job. She was not taking her new job seriously. September 2002, Department of Human Services issued a performance review for the team that was less than favorable. Her team got favorable ratings for the quality of work, creativity, and her advice and understanding of problems. They got less favorable marks for the important metrics. On a scale of 1 to 5, Harris only got a 2 on whether she was thorough, helpful, and proactive, and only a 3 on whether she showed good judgment. <laughs> Things you clearly need to be a, a leader. She doesn't have those. All right. They f***ed up. Biden reportedly blasts Obama for bungling Democrats' biggest foreign boondoggle, Afghanistan, and the exit from there. Uh, yeah, so Biden's saying it's uh, it's Obama's fault. It was Trump's fault, too. It's not mine. It's the shadow presidency. It's the administration. Um, yeah. They effed up in 2014, Biden told a friend, according to Woodward. That's where... That's why we are here. We f***ed it up. Barack never took Putin seriously. Biden's referring to Russia's invasion of Crimea during the Obama administration. Obama was famously lenient on Russia, caught on the hot mic pledging more flexibility after his 2012 re-election and mocking Mitt Romney for taking Putin seriously. So it's not surprising that Putin calculated he could walk right into Crimea after and suffer only a slap on the wrist from the U.S. Yeah, well, you were the president, Joe. Like, you're the one who let him do it. So it's not Obama's fault. It's your dumb old butt. Uh, Biden sabotaging Kamala Harris's presidential campaign after being forced to drop re-election bid, pundits say. Yeah, behind closed doors, everyone's like, Joe is super upset. President Biden is so bitter about being forced to drop his re-election bid by top members of his own party that he's deliberately sabotaging Kamala Harris's campaign, according to the growing chorus of political pundits. Since being pressured out of the race in July over fears, about declining cognitive abilities, Biden has done little for Harris beyond endorsing her and has largely been no show at vice president's campaign events. Yeah, I think he's old. He's dying. I think he's going to die next year. I think, and like, imagine he was president when it happened. Kamala would have became the president. Like, because he probably could have beat Trump. He probably could have. But they couldn't, like, put strings on him and marionette him. He's too old. He's also pulled a spotlight from his intended successor on numerous occasions, including delivering his own comments last week on how the White House was responding to Hurricane Helene, even after he canceled the Las Vegas campaign event and hurried back to D.C. to be briefed on the storm's impact. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, whatever. Kamala's trash. The relationship between Kamala's team and Joe Biden's White House has been increasingly fraught in the final weeks before Election Day. Ten people familiar with the situation tell Axios why it matters. Biden's team wants Harris to win the election, but many senior Biden aides remain wounded by the president being pushed out. Yeah, it's not just Biden. It's the people that work for him that actually believe in him and think that, like, you know, he's the end-all be-all and he was going to save us. And now we got this usurper. So the mutiny has begun. It's a festering from the inside. They look at her. They hear her. They try to understand what she's saying. They can't. But guess what? They're trying their best. Let's just take her and put her on the cover of Vogue magazine. Vice President Kamala Harris, the candidate for our times. Absolutely not. She's a candidate for the end times. All right, MSNBC host Mika Brzezinski expressed anxiety Friday after hearing from a largely undecided Gen Z voter panel featured on Morning Joe, a horrible show. It's insane to watch like how these people react to stuff. It's worse than me when I'm playing. Like, oh my word, how dare you? Yeah, they act, they literally act like this. The panel included one voter who said he's planning to write in a candidate and another saying she needs more research before choosing who to support in November. Brzezinski immediately took a deep breath, <sighs> expressed gratitude to participants and appeared to feign tears. Okay, so first of all, we thank everybody for participating. Absolutely no bad feelings to say about people who participate in these conversations. So she absolutely has bad feelings. We thank you so much. She seemed to pretend to cry. But does anybody at this table need to take a deep breath? Because I do. I just do. We've been listening to Undecideds for weeks on two-way. It's really hard to believe that there are any people who might vote third party or try to write in. It's just such a lack of understanding about the stakes, about why that's just throwing your vote away. I mean, these people are terrified is what it is. Anxiety and fear is festering inside the Democratic Party because they can't even buy into Kamala. Because they'll be like, how was your day? And she'll be like, a day. Well, a day is when you wake up and you are, have a second chance to right any of the wrongs from the previous day, to unburden yourself. And, you know, 
That's like literally what she gets on with. She's insane. Breaking. Rumors are swirling that Kamala Harris' campaign team is contemplating suspending Tim Waltz over the recent allegation he had an ongoing affair with a minor. Stay tuned and follow for more updates. This is getting good. Wow. Uh, black Insurrectionist at DocNet YouTube on X. Okay, Tim, I guess now would be a good time to drop my October surprise. You remember him, right? The real reason you walked away from your teaching? The kid who spent the night at your home? The one you went to the gay bar with? The reason the school board had a meeting about you. What do you think, Tim? Should I drop that now or should I wait another week or so? You know, the student you were having sex with, the male student you were having sex with, they didn't call you touchdown Timmy because you were the football coach. Oh wait, you lied about that also? You were the assistant coach. What do you think, Tim? You remember the Indigo Girls concert, right? The gay bar? Spending the night and of course the school board meeting. Think it is time, Tim? Touchdown, Timmy? You are touchy, all right. Yike. He isn't fit to be candidate for second in line anyway. I agree. Tony Lane states. I'm not sure what the deal with Tony Lane is. What's his story? Proud Patriot committed to making Nevada and our country great again. All right, sure. Whatever. Well, anyway, this guy. So today's day, I want to explain how I'm going about this. It is completely impossible to get everything into one post. There will be multiple posts today. Even going into tomorrow, I expect 20 to 25 posts, possibly more. So if you guys want to check this out, it's at DocNet YouTube. But I want to explain about some misinformation going around. There are three accusers. Two of the accusers have given testimony information that has been backed up. One of the accusers has no possible way of corroborating the accusations. I will not be printing anything about the accuser who could not corroborate his information. Some of the emails I will be printing from the accuser are graphic, and you will see redacted things about Waltz's family secrets regarding their kids, although I do not give an S about the daughter who was given rioters information about locations of the National Guard. I like Gus. I feel for Gus, and in no way do I want to hurt Gus. Uh, there were breaking stories regarding my cooperation with law enforcement. This is partly true, but not for the extent that, that I saw people printing. There were reports from Sarah Fields that the Trump campaign was following up on information provided regarding the accusers. Yes, that is true. Sarah had printed that the Trump campaign has corroborated information. Yes, that is true. I also saw a report that one of the accusers agreed to come forward and speak. That is not true yet. One accuser did speak out already. The other accuser put a detailed account in writing. He also describes physical attributes of Tim Walsh that if he was not telling the truth, Tim Walsh could easily disprove. The ball's in your court, touchdown Tim. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and check that out. And here he is, a, an avid hunter, as he explains and describes himself. Let's see him uh, go ahead and load this shotgun. Yeah, okay. I mean, like, whatever. It's not that impressive. Top election data analysts say Trump's odds of winning have suddenly surged, but can't explain why. No idea. Absolutely zero idea of why Trump would be doing better than Kamala. Data scientists who construct a model to predict who will win 2024 president election says Trump has surged ahead in the last week. Yeah, and we showed you the poly markets. They're there. All right, well, uh, whatever. Let's see what J.D. Vance is getting on with here with this misses. Very interesting take. If the incidents were limited to a handful of apartment complex, uh, apartment complexes, and the mayor said our dedicated police officers have acted on those concerns. A handful of problems. Only, Martha, do you hear yourself? Only a handful of apartment complexes in America were taken over by Venezuelan gangs, and Donald Trump is the problem, and not Kamala Harris's open border. Americans are so fed up with what's going on, and they have every right to be. And I, I really find this exchange, Martha, sort of interesting because you seem to be more focused with nitpicking everything that Donald Trump has said rather than acknowledging that apartment complexes in the United States of America are being taken over by violent gangs. I worry so much more. Yeah, I mean, like, well-spoken. And what's he talking about? Just tune into this. This is insane.
All right, there you have it. Boom. So what's uh, Trump come out and say? Breaking. Trump to announce Operation Aurora in massive move to oust gangs like Tren de Aragua, the Venezuelan uh, gang who took over. What has Kamala announced? I would change nothing about what Joe Biden did. All right. Well, uh, that woke me up. All right. What's going on here? The Young Turks producer Anna Kasparian says she left the Democratic Party after she was molested by a homeless man with an erection in Los Angeles. Good Lord. Kasparian said she was shamed by liberals for stating that she felt fearful to leave her house after the incident. Kasparian says she was picking up her dog's poop when a homeless man came up from behind her and grabbed her hips. He allegedly had an erection and started thrusting. When she shared her story, liberals accused her of painting a wrongful picture of the homeless community, some people calling her racist, even though she didn't say what race the man was. Because that is it. Attack. Ad hominem. That's the liberal way. That woke me up, Kasparian said. People that have associated myself with because I thought they were good people have stereotypes in their head and are totally blind to the fact that they have those stereotypes and go around accusing others of being bad actors. Similar to the journalist there that was talking with J.D. Vance, nitpicking at what Trump was saying, ignoring the fact that apartment buildings were taken over by Venezuelan gangs. Kamala Harris plagiarized at least a dozen sections of her criminal justice book. Good Lord. Smart on crime, according to a new investigation. The current vice president even lifted material from Wikipedia. We have the receipts. And uh, conservative activist seizes on passages from Harris's book. A report by Christopher Rufo says the Democratic presidential nominee copied five short passages for her 2009 book on crime. A plagiarism expert says the lapses were not serious. No big deal. New York Times basically admits Kamala plagiarized, and there were lapses in her book, but then blames conservatives for noticing and pointing it out. Unbelievable. Yeah. How dare you? Uh, Kamala, you're fired. Let's go ahead. Let's hear it, because uh, there's only like, what, 25 days or something like that before the election. So let's hear the big man say it. All right, there you go. All right, well, we had a ship sink down uh, in, was it New Zealand, Australia, something like that? Well, the captain is not to blame. That's fair enough to come out and say, but the reason why they're saying it is because she's a female, and she's the first female, and it's also the first ship that they lost since World War II. Brand new, was it? I don't know. New Zealand's defense minister clapped back at claims that the appointment of a female to captain a $61 million Navy ship ultimately led to its sinking. Mm -mm, definitely not. It sank on Sunday on a reef off the coast of Samoa that it was surveying. 75 crew and passengers were ordered to abandon the vessel and life rafts. And they were rescued. The incident sparked debate online whether the captain, Commander Yvonne Gray, was hired in part due to her gender and sexuality and according to diversity, equity, and inclusion ideology. Yeah, so, like, d did they follow it that? Did she get the job over someone who was more qualified? It's a misogynistic narrative. Not really. It's a good question. Court of Inquiry has been stood up to establish what caused the terrible incident. The one thing that we already know did not it is the gender of the ship's captain, a woman with 30 years naval experience who on the night made a call to get her people to safety. Yeah, okay, yeah, but did she steer them into danger? Uh, we will not have a woke military. All right, Donald's are not about it.
All right, that's enough. So here's the deal. The reason why I show you that is because um, the reason why the U.S. military was so strong and so powerful is because that's the way they treated their soldiers. They shaved their heads, they made them all exactly the same, and they wore them down into uh, like nothing and then rebuilt them. And what they're doing here is allowing humans to do whatever they want. And guess what? When you allow humans to do whatever they want and then you ask them to do something, they're not going to listen. So you watch if a war breaks out, what happens to these uh, military soldiers? Kanye West accused of drugging and raping ex-assistant Lauren uh, Piscotti at a Diddy party in bombshell lawsuit. All right. Kanye West drugged and raped his former assistant at a party with Diddy. She claims in a horrifying new lawsuit against the disgraced rapper. Yeah. Um, 88-page updated lawsuit filed Friday. New disturbing claims. Delves into his allegedly infamous sex parties and the full horror of his neo-Nazi views that included hate-filled rants and forcing staff to draw swastikas. She also claimed West promised to pay her a $4 million a year salary, bragged about uh, it to Jay-Z, wrongfully fired her, and reneged on a $3 million severance payout. Uh, he denied the claims and said it was baseless, said there was blackmail going on. Yikes. And here he is, and I'm pretty sure him and his wife are getting divorced as well. So two failed marriages, uh, alleged uh, rapist. Not good. And also like a praiser of Hitler. <laughs> Maybe he's influencing the kids a little too much. Adolf Hitler had some good ideas. A fifth of Gen Z Americans believe, according to Daily Mail poll. Yeah, so 20% of uh, Gen Zers believe that Hitler, like, you know, he wasn't that bad. He wasn't. He wasn't that bad. He was pretty good. Why do they believe that? Well, I mean, a lot of them are following Hezbollah and Hamas and all this. I don't know what's going on. Some liberal MPs are mounting a new effort to oust Justin Trudeau. He took a trip over to uh, the East, to the ASEAN uh, summit or whatever. They're trying to like get the uh, Asian countries like to be like better at trading with Western countries. So he's over there smoozing it up, and all of his MPs are like, you know, chit chat and saying, "Listen, let's get this letter signed, and when he gets back, we'll give it to him and say we hate his guts and that he's ruining the Liberal Party." Mystery drones swarmed a U.S. military base for 17 days. The Pentagon stomped. I have no idea. We, I don't know. What's going on? We have no idea. Well, obviously they wouldn't say even if they did. And this guy comes out and he says, The drone swarms targeting U.S. military bases are operated by a mothership UFO. And he's a top Pentagon official. Retired. Senior Pentagon official has confirmed that UFO motherships were spotted releasing swarms of smaller craft, adding further mystery to the still unexplained intrusions over multiple U.S. military bases. His statements come amid the release of 50 pages of Air Force records related to the provocative drone incursions that one general calls close encounters at Langley. For at least 17 nights last summer, swarms of noisy small UFOs were seen dusk moving at rapid speeds, displaying flashing red, green, and white lights, penetrating the highly restrictive airspace. When they shoot them down, when they follow them. Two of notable aspects are the fact that the drone signal jamming devices have proven ineffective, and these crafts are making no effort to remain concealed. It's clear they've been seen as though taunting us. Is it another country or is it alien? We don't know. Keep you posted. Uh, Georgia Airport Chaos Delta customer flips out, rampages through the terminal. Can we get this one to work? We are running late here. All right. The person just goes crazy. It's a pretty good video. Anyway, another one. Frontier airline passenger rants. She's president after a pilot wouldn't turn back for her forgotten phone. So a complete psychopath here, just like losing her mind. Anyway, she forgot her phone in the terminal. They wouldn't turn it around. Uh, if I was white and in a suit, you would stop and playing. The irate woman could be heard shouting at a flight attendant. Laugh now. I'm the president of this whole damn country. Watch, see the TV news. Yes, I, indeed, I need to get off this plane and I'm going to tell you straight up. Don't ever come against nobody because of their skin color again. Okay, so she's black and she's actually a racist. All right, people, we were over. We're trying to cut this down, but there's so much to cover. We missed Monday's news. Sigma Tiger, all up in your grill. Going to tear the mask off in a couple of weeks. Countdown coming. New set coming. Stay tuned. Sigma Tiger, signing off.